there back out framing some rake walls today um as luck would have it i actually had a bloke reach out from watching the youtube videos last night and he has decided to make an app for carpenters um and he sent me a link to give it a go so we're using that today for the rake walls and then we'll use it for the rafters so i've got the app on my phone he sent me a link to it so we'll give it a crack so i need me starting wall height all length uh stud centers right, so i just need me uh, my starting wall height's two four my length i'm gonna go a little bit longer because i want it to work to the low side i want it to just grab that plate uh do i no we'll just go in between 3940 3940 stud centers five uh, stud is 35 mil calculate so it's a pretty decent cut list um you could just give that to your apprentice and Surely they even they'd be able to figure it out. This is looking at it the other way around for me, but all the same. Um, running measurements. Bottom plate. Yeah, okay. So it's got that's your center of stud. So you got near side is zero. I think that makes sense. And the far side, so that's end on. plate so it does allow for the top plate obviously being longer if you line everything up you're going to end up with a bit more on one side <coughs> um, and then it gives you your stud length long point and short point which would just be a five degree cut but that's still one of my questions was how do you know what side of line this measurements to so 2313 and it does it to the long point which is how it's drawn so it's pretty good um, We'll get everything cut and laid out on the floor and then we'll stand it up. Pretty basic. The only part it doesn't do is wall junctions, but I'll just lay everything out on 450s and then just measure in studs um, for suit. It's going to be the easiest way. So I'm just framing out above that window there. Um, something worth noting, if this was brick, I would put just four to five blocks down that side on their face because it's weatherboard and I actually need a stud on the other side to shoot too, you do need to check them out. So that's what I'll do. I'll come down the middle of this. Come down 45. Uh, and that's a 240 lintel. And I'll do that check out in it and shoot it up and that'll give me something below the lintel to shoot to. Um, if this was brick, you'd only be picking up plaster on the internal, so you wouldn't need to do this. So I'm just working along cutting my plates now. This app's actually really good. Um, gives me my top plate, my bottom plate. So I've got my bottom plate cut in between. I'll cut my top plate now with my pitches on the end. And then I'll just work the stud centers on this. Um, this shouldn't take long at all. I'll mark the bottom plate on these. Uh, and I'll come back through and just mark the tops. Increase weight. So I'll just work to the near side because that's an on. 450, 1350, 1800. Ah, sorry, 459, 1350. Um, it gives you a very comprehensive layout. Sorry about the fucking exorbitant rain jacket. It's getting a bit fucking wet. Um, so now using the uh, stud length chart that I got here, uh, I'll just set me miter saw probably to long point. 
Five degrees. Lock that in. And all I do is just work um, long pointer studs. I'll just work this list. Piece of piss. It's like fucking six studs. I don't have to do any measuring. I can just stand at the drop top, cut them all, shoot it, and it's as close to shooting a regular wall as you can. Hey mate. Hey. Yeah, I'll have a look for it. <laughs> ah, that's gonna be right over that top. Ah, da 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 da. Yeah, yeah. Fucking pretty good fit. Ah. So, I haven't done a lot of filming. Having quite a slow day. It's great soul destroying. Um, but that's walls up. So I was only uh, five walls, like obviously the bigger ones. Um, probably 11 now. Probably got it done in like six hours, I guess. Um, which I think will take. Um, yeah, so now plum brace, temporary brace, um, tie off. I'm gonna trim off some ends and shit. I got a little overhang here. Tidy that up. Tie it back into the house. Top plate it. Um, kind of by two o'clock, I want to be putting um, rafters on. Um, I, <laughs> I say this, uh, with conscious of coming across like a fuckwit, but that half was actually really helpful. <laughs> um, I'm not paid by him or anything like that. He just fucking reached out and said, do you want to have a go at it? Um, it saved me a lot of time. It saved me a lot of guesswork. So if you're going to do shit like this, I actually don't know what he charges for the app. I'd say anything up to like 50 bucks or fucking something like that for the year or a one-off. Um, it's probably worth it. It would annoy me paying it because I'm a tight ass, but it would definitely be worth it. Like, on a job like this, it would have saved me so much time. Um, the alternative would have been to flick out on the ground um, and measure each stud. Um, you could have worked out, uh, like, how much each stud comes up her spacing and that kind of shit, but just be a fucking, just buy the fucking app. Hey, anyway, um, I'll bring some temp braces in and we'll start to get this thing put together. Uh, um, time to start temp bracing. The idea of temp bracing is to hold it plumb and straight while you do your roof and get the permanent bracing on. Um, Temporary bracing, I think, is more important on skillion or mono pitch roofs uh, because they have a tendency to fuck around more. And there's nothing when you got trusses and like gable ends, they kind of pull each other in and hold it, like all the parts hold it together, roughly speaking. Um, and the bracing works a little bit better. So I. This is a pretty short section of wall. I will still put a brace in the middle of that and a brace in the middle of that one. Um, I'll do one brace across the end. I'll do one brace up this wall and another brace on that wall. So this side, and that way I'll have three braces on it plus shot off plumb up there. Um, I'll also have a brace going this way. Maybe in theory that wall would be plumb, but in reality, it's probably not. 
Um, I'll show you the tie-in detail I do for up there. I'll run the top plate long, uh, sorry, the pitching plate long into the existing house and I will put a noggin and shoot down into the noggin. Um, and then, yeah, another brace here. Uh, for plumbing up by myself, I use these turnbuckles. They are a byproduct of a tool company. Um, I probably could still get some made if there was enough interest, but I was fucking. Um, so, yeah, we'll put plum it all. I'll probably use my laser for most of this plumbing it. Um, I'll just set it up in that corner that'll check me for square as well because this wall, the bottom of this, still isn't shut off. Should be pretty good because it's got that one, which I did have a line flick. Um, still got to go to Bowen's and get another uh, last piece of skyline for across there. But yeah, we should be on the rafters of Sarvo, at least getting them cut. Like we've got ply brace to do, I think this four sheet's a ply brace. Uh, maybe across of hoop iron, across uh, the end, and across here. But really nothing too stressful in this. So a handy trick for if you're doing temp bracing and trying to, ideally you want your temp brace on a 45 angle and you're often kind of guessing what that 45 angle is. The easiest way I've worked out to do it is the height of the wall plus half the height of the wall. So 2.4 wall plus 1200, because that's half. Um, if you cut those braces at 3.6, that will get you close-ish to uh, half, or sorry, to 45, uh, which is obviously the ideal angle. So I'm not doing what I just suggested, because I don't have the timber for it. Um, and also I'm putting the I might have to for that side. Let's just brace it this way. By the time I put the turnbuckle, so shoot it to the top plate, and by the time I put a turnbuckle on down there, it should work out okay. Pretty much go through, do that to each wall, and then you just turn that in or out for where it's going to be plumb. But I'll do that when I'm leveling, that'll be the, the only and last temperate race I show because it's repetitive as fuck. But that's the gist of it. He's just go. So, for plumbing, I was going to do uh, the fucking Milwaukee line laser, but I was just fucking having a shit of a time finding the line, and I don't know where my receiver's gone. So we're just gonna run the layout station, I'm hoping that picks up. We should get that. So obviously this thing shoots up plumb as well. So this will check me for square. Beautiful. That's good to go. Right. Check this up here. Hold that on a hundred. 
That one's coming a little bit. So I didn't have a line flicked in the back wall here. Um, so I'm somewhat just doing it now. Still got to come in quite a bit. Fuck yeah. That's us all braced. This would be considered well over brace. I'm shot into the house. Into the house. Uh, I've got a crosser hoop iron here, a piece of ply here, ply there, ply there, and across there. That's actually it. We're gonna do a little bit more than that. Um, I'm gonna do another cross of hoop iron here. That'll be an extra one. Um, and I'm also gonna ply this whole wall. Plying this whole wall has two reasons. <coughs> Um, the side they've called for ply is the shower, sorry, is the shower end of the wall. Um, so I would, if it was this side, <laughs> I'll try and figure out how to explain this. I'd put the ply on this side, uh, this would be cabinetry and everything would be fine. Because they've called for it on this side, this side's the shower and you don't want to put ply in the back of your shower. Which means it'd have to go this side. Which means this is going to be fucking uh, four, six mil thick or whatever the fuck it is than the rest of the wall. So you have to pack out the entire wall. Given that I need to pack out the entire wall because I've got to put it on one side, I'll just ply the whole thing and it'll be really secure and the building won't move. I'll also do this one. This one's got to do with how I'm thinking I'll have to brace the roof because I might have to do a strap of hoop iron over to here. Um, and I want that to be steady and straight. And yeah, the hoop iron's cheap as it's like fucking 30 bucks a roll, I think. 28, 28 bucks a roll. Um, given how negligent the engineering is on this, not in the sense it's under engineered, there's just not much of it. Um, I'll do a little bit more. Because uh, it. This is what keeps your building straight. So if you're struggling with outer plums and shit like that, the engineer doesn't give a shit how you plumb the building and how it stays plumb. Um, the engineer cares that it meets the specs for wind resistance and that kind of stuff. So there's two different things involved in bracing and you, and the, you as the carpenter need to think of a little bit more like the practicality side of it. Um, obviously depends on the job. If it's just a fucking smash and grab, then smash it up and fucking move on. But on this one, it's not. I'll take a bit of time with it and make sure it's how I want it. 
So when I'm running brace like this on the outside of a building, it's a pain in the ass and your um, steel strap has a habit of just falling off the edge. So I've found it easier. Pick a nog that's halfway and run it over that. And come back under here. Cause you need to get these angles right, otherwise you get kinks in your strap. So that one will have to lift up. You can do this before um, standing the wall. It's just a habit I'm not in. And then you just bend that up. I'll move the string line though. That string line was there just to check my plates for straight on the long wall. Ah, oh, fuck. The string line's about to get cut. Yeah, like that. I'll fold that side up too, just to keep Inspector happy. Two nails in that, four in that, and you good with gold. So with the tops, I'll show you how I tension them. Um, you still have a metal tension brace in the middle, but they can only pull in so much, so you actually need to shoot them tight. Um, I haven't done the tops of these ones yet, because I've got a uh, pitching plate it. Um, and I like my straps to go over the top of the pitching plate um, and then I won't do the, see I got the metal straps on the bottom here I won't do that on the top just because I want straighter plaster lines, you can't really see it on the bottom I'll use the um, stud screws um, If they weren't so expensive I would use them everywhere but they fucking are um, so, yeah, These are how I get the straps tight Go up on an angle, don't go a stupid angle because you'll never get it. Go halfway in, end it up. Just like that. I put two nails kind of in behind it and then pull it out. And then just tap it back down. If you nailed in front of it before you pull the nail out, it's clearly a pain in the ass to get back out. Oh, my tin snips down there. So you pretty much cut it off halfway across the plate. And just whack a couple on the top. So I'll do the same to all of them once I get the pitching plate on and then we'll do ply. So we're up to nailing off ply. Um, there's nothing really that exceptional, exceptional, exceptional about nailing off ply um, other than just make sure your nailing patterns are right. So 50 mil on the outsides, I think it's 100 on the middle um, and depending on the brace they might call you to, for you to shoot noggins. Um, on this occasion they haven't. Uh, I did just swap guns from the Max gun back to the Bostitch because I was, the Maxes were overdriving. So the trick with ply is to get your nails just onto the surface. Um, you're better off whacking them flush than you are over penetrating. Um, your inspector may make you come back through and nail it all again. It is a little bit of a pain in the arse though, because as you run out of air, 
your gun will not sink as deep and then when you got like your tanks full on your compressor um, they'll overdrive a little bit but just something to watch out for because that is a common one and then also I've lifted that up off the ground so it doesn't soak up water as well I've left the top long because it's a rake wall um, it's gonna be easier to just bash it down or cut it up there run the sifter along um, it's just a kind of a little frame to be cutting ply on this is my little spot and I'm gonna fucking lean down under this brace to cut me ply but that's alright there's only a couple of sheets of it That is braced and plumbed and fucking tied off. So plies up, nailed, tops trimmed. 